At number 10, we have the Boneyard in Arizona. Tucson, Arizona is the final resting place of many old aeroplanes. At the Davis Monthan Air Force Base is the world's largest so called boneyard for retired planes. It houses some 4,000 in this desert location. While not first discovered by Google Earth, the Google satellite images sparked worldwide interest in this eerie yet fascinating location, which has since become a popular tourist attraction. The base hosts all kinds of interesting aviation models in various states of disarray, including the notorious B-52 bomber. I for one really want to go there. This next discovery is a fantastic Google Earth find. In our ninth spot today, we have the pentagram. The sigil of Baphomet is the official insignia of the Church of Satan. So of course many people consider the symbol to be satanic. Well here we have what appears to be this symbol located on the southern shore of the upper Tobol reservoir. This symbol is massive, it's roughly 1200 feet or 366 meters in diameter. Many people were wondering what on earth is this for? Some say it's used for devil worship or sacrifices. Thankfully it's not, but it's still something creepy. It is actually actually an abandoned Soviet era camp, and I believe that the lines that we see that appear to be engraved in the earth are actually roads. What a great design, huh? In our 8th spot, we have the aliens. Are aliens real? Do you believe in them? Well, Google Earth seems to have captured this weird being on a balcony in France. See for yourself. Now, what on earth is that? Is it a weird statue put outside to scare away the neighbors or meddling kids? The dude's face looks like it could be the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt. Did they decide to take these pictures on Halloween? Like I have so many questions. Or maybe it's a real alien. At this point, aliens probably do live among us, so we're all aliens. I'm an alien. In our seventh spot, we have the disposed bodies. Now, I don't know what's going on here. Was this an art project gone wrong? Did a clothing store shut down and they had to give away their mannequins? Or is this a scene from Goosebumps? There's something so creepy about these discarded mannequins. Like the fact that they're wrapped up? What if they're the worst? Works of a serial killer. I mean, think about it, okay? It's pretty clever to discard of a body that way. You wrap the cut up body parts to make it look like they aren't real body parts. Meanwhile, they are hidden in plain sight. Please don't get any ideas. I just have an overactive imagination. In reality, it probably just was an art project, just a very creepy one. The guy in the trunk. Now, I have multiple questions for this. And I really don't know if I want to know the answers to them. First off, why is this guy naked? Second, why is he in the trunk of someone's car? Like, are we witnessing a kidnapping or is he escaping a kidnapping? Next, what's with the dog? It better just be taking a nap, okay? There's just so much going on in this picture. Let's just hope that he was intentionally naked and intentionally wanted to go lie down in his trunk for a bit, okay? Like, this could be used as inspiration for the fourth Hangover movie. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Handy Mandy. This next one is not PG-13, okay? As if that naked man was. But seriously, warning, the next one is for mature audience members only. Because we got two individuals getting frisky in some alleyway. The man can clearly be seen with his pants down, and the woman's hand is in that general direction. So you get what's going on. And if you don't, you're too young to be watching this. Looks like Google is out here ruining everyone's fun. How awkward would it be not only to get caught, but having an image taken of you getting caught and upload it online. In our fourth spot, we have the Creepy Scarecrows. Located in a field in Finland, we have what they call the Silent People, which are a thousand scarecrows lined up in a field. This was done by the artist Riho Kila. No thank you, I'm sorry, I'd be too scared of them like coming alive at night or something. Also the name The Silent People, it's creepy. But hey, at least those will scare away the crows, you know, and anyone, for a matter of fact. Moving on to number three, we have the mooning. In April of 2018, an English man named Toby Sullivan was out for a walk with his friend when he spotted the Google car. So he did what any normal person would do. He dropped his drawers and full on mooned the camera. Now, I don't know what was running through his mind when he did this, but I definitely did not need to see his peach. Also, for the longest time, his buttocks was uncensored and people could literally zoom into his crack. Okay, it's a little TMI. But when the photo and Toby's story went viral, Google decided 
decided to finally censor this guy's behind. Thank gosh. But even with the sensor, you can still fully see this guy's crack, so. Coming in at number two, we have mowing the lawn. Here's another young lad that recognized the Google car and thought, now is my time to shine. This guy was out mowing his lawn when he spotted the car and decided to lift up his shirt and flash the camera. Even though his face is pixelated, you can see he's given Google a funny face, a little ah. You know, I bet him and his family had a big laugh about that one. But seriously, that meant that every time someone looked up his place to get directions or whatnot, that image popped up. Hmm, boy, oh boy. And in our number one spot today, we have the mannequins. We got more creepy mannequins, folks. This time, we know for sure that they are mannequins and not just wrapped up dead bodies. So you may be wondering, hmm, that's an odd way to decorate your lawn. Where is this, a nuclear testing zone? No, no, this is a neighborhood in Santa Rosa, California. Apparently a neighbor complained, probably a Karen, that this guy's fence was too high for the city's law. So the neighbors lowered their fence, but then in spite he decorated his yard so that his neighbors wake up every morning to this lovely view. I mean, there's no rules against having mannequins in your yard, so should've just let him have his high fence. That's what you get. Starting off this countdown, we have Snow Saddle. Snow Saddle is a major mountain peak of the Himalayas in Nepal. But if you try to view it from Google Earth, you'll see that the whole area is blacked out. Which is obviously suspicious. Why is a mountain peak blurred? What's going on there that has Google blurring it? To this day, no one knows for sure. But of course, there are a number of theories. One theory is that the Nazis had secret expeditions to the Himalayas and found a UFO base in that area. Sounds crazy, right? Well, there have been a number of UFO sightings in that area, so maybe it is a top secret UFO base. Who knows? We don't know. In at number nine, we have the Badlands Guardian. Google Earth has revealed many geological anomalies in the past 10 years, and this one in particular is very impressive indeed. Near Medicine Hat in southeastern Canada, Google Earth picked up what looks like a Native American face in profile wearing a First Nations headdress carved into a rock. Ironically, the clear humanoid looks like it's wearing earphones, although what you're seeing is actually a path and oil well. The resemblance is actually quite uncanny. The face seems to have been formed by the erosion of rainwater on layers of rich clay soil. The face has since been dubbed the Badlands Guardian. From a seemingly natural made phenomenon to a man made extravaganza, in at number 8 we have the world's largest letters. So what do you do if you're super rich and you want to spend your money on looking super cool? You already have the latest, well, everything. So you kind of need something unique that money can't buy, although actually money can buy you the labor. Hamad bin Habdan al Nayan, <laughs> sorry if I said that wrong, is an Arab sheikh who didn't stop at buying just his own island. No, no, no. He then carved his first name into it so big it could be seen from space. The letters H A M A D are a thousand meters high and two miles long and have been picked up on Google Earth. The letters extend into the ocean and form their own waterway system, which is pretty cool. Speaking of cool stuff found in the water, we have the discovery of an ancient tidal fish trap right here at number 7. Back in 2009, Google Earth produced a satellite image of a strange V-shaped structure in the water off the coast of Poppet Sands in Wales. Since the image was released, it has been discovered that the structure had been submerged unnoticed for a thousand years or so and was actually a fish trap during the Norman Conquest. The discovery led to an investigation by the Pembrokeshire College who were able to discern more about the trap. A thousand years, seriously. Keeping it nautical in at number 6, we have the SS Jassim Shipwreck. In 2003, a Bolivian cargo ferry hit shallow water off the coast of Sudan and was partially capsized. The wreckage was previously known of, but it was first made visible to the general public via Google Earth, which plainly shows the ship on its side. This is one of several shipwrecks visible on Google Earth, which is slowly but surely making our waters more accessible and solving several mysteries of our vast ocean. Another personal favourite shipwreck you can now see on Google Earth is the S-World Discoverer which is 
off the coast of the Solomon Islands. Whilst there was little to no bloodshed on these sunken boats, I can't definitely say the same for our number 5 which is the lake that looks to be made of blood in Iraq. Just outside Sadar city in Iraq there is a blood red lake. While it probably isn't filled with real blood, nobody can quite explain why it's such a vivid red colour. The image was taken by Google Earth in 2007, with many speculating it could be from animal blood by a nearby slaughterhouse, although that would have to be a lot of blood to turn the whole lake that red. Others say it's pollution or sewage, I just don't know. Maybe it's just red, like Hiller Lake in Australia is just pink. Weird though. An excellent way that Google Earth has been utilised in the past few years is in criminal cases. The roving camera has often caught images of some crimes in progress, helping injured parties discover more about their cases. Coming in at number 4, we have two thieves identified by Google Maps, which is a part of Google Earth. A 14 year old boy from the Netherlands was having no luck in identifying two teens who stole his bike, wallet and phone in broad daylight. That was until 6 months later when he remembered the day his bike was stolen was also the day that he saw a google car driving around his neighbourhood. Lo and behold, as he viewed his local area on google street view, he found an image of himself riding his bike with two people approaching behind him. After the boy contacted the authorities, google released the original image to the Dutch police who found the boys. They turned out to be a pair of twins who were no stranger to crime in the area. Case solved. So coming in at number 3 of our top 10 Google Earth discoveries, we have a secret underground layer from the Church of Scientology. Spotted in the New Mexico desert, Google Earth picked up a symbol, two overlapping circles, thought to belong to the Church of Technology, a branch of the Church of Scientology. The symbol, visible only from the air, is near the religion's Trementina base as well as close to a mile long landing strip. It is thought that the base leads to underground tunnels, eventually leading to a vault containing the works from church founder L. Ron Hubbard. So we are living in the 21st century, in fact we're almost a quarter of the way through it, so you would have thought with all the technology available to us that we will have discovered everything we need to know about our planet. Apparently not. Just over 10 years ago, Google Earth helped biologists discover a new rainforest. Not only that, it is thought to be the largest rainforest in southern Africa. The rainforest on Mount Mabu in Mozambique was discovered by Dr. Julian Bayliss. He was browsing Google Earth to look for medium altitude forests as part of a Royal Botanic Gardens Q project. As he looked, he discovered what looked like an undocumented area of rainforest, which led to research teams exploring further. They soon discovered the forest in the flesh, so to speak, and it is a whopping 7,800 hectares. It also houses some species previously unknown to scientists. Ok, so up next at number 1, we have one of the most important and life saving Google Earth discoveries ever made, and that has to be the location of many of the Cambodian minefields. Working alongside charity Halo Trust, Google has been able to map out areas with potential mines in Cambodia. With the help of Google Earth Pro, Halo are able to survey dangerous areas more closely, allowing them a clear and deeper view where mines could be. Then when they investigate the areas, they are able to defuse many of them. The company has said that Google Earth has revolutionised the way we see and browse the world, which I couldn't agree with more. Hooray for Google Earth! So guys, did you enjoy this video? Should we make a part 2? This is just the tip of the iceberg of all of the cool stuff that you can see on Google Earth, so if you haven't downloaded it or just at least browse the street that you live on, then do so. I for one absolutely love browsing places I haven't been yet, like Japan and China, just to check out a kind of feeling of what it would be like. So starting off this countdown, we have when duty calls. I mean when you gotta go, you gotta go. You would just hope that no one was around to catch you. Don't want an old lady walking her dog to run into you, popping a squat behind a bush and letting one go, and you really don't want a Google car to pass by and catch you in the act and then publish it online for everyone to see. Because that's actually what happened to this guy. Poor dude was trying so hard to be discreet and he just couldn't win. What's worse is that his company's vehicle wasn't blurred. So now if his work sees this, it's probably very easy to identify him. Moving on to number 9, we have Baker Lake. Located in Nunavut, Canada, Google Earth is letting you see none of it. Get it? Like none of it? <laughs> Sorry, I love my buns. So if you look it up on Google Maps, it's weird because you see just a black strip covering a large area near the lake. 
What's it blocking? Again, we don't know for sure, but we have some crazy conspiracies. One theory is that the strip is concealing extraterrestrial beacons that help the navigation of the crafts, or that it's a craft landing strip. I don't know. They also say that this area would be perfect for the beacons since snow creates a powerful electromagnetic field that helps send a better signal. What do you think though? Let me know in the comments below. In our eighth spot, we have the Pacific Northwest Blur. Here is a view of the area close to the Washington, Oregon border. And would you look at that? There's a random patch blacked out. To this day, no one knows what that is. But something is there that Google doesn't want us to see. In fact, some people believe that it is a HARP site or H-A-A-R-P. HARP is said to be a military program that weaponizes weather and causes natural disasters like floods, earthquakes, droughts, you get it. Now, some people have actually traveled to that area to see what's up, but unfortunately haven't been able to find anything. Kind of suspicious, like what does Google know Though we don't know. A whole lot, that's what. In our seventh spot, we have 2207 Seymour Avenue. This is the address to a home located in Cleveland, Ohio. A home in which a horrific crime took place. A crime that people don't like to talk about. From 2002 to 2004, Adriel Castro kidnapped three young women. Michelle Knight, Amanda Berry, and Georgina De Jesus. He kept them captive in his home until 2013 when Amanda Berry escaped with her daughter and contacted the police. Police came to his house and rescued the other women. This house has since been blurred on Google Maps due to the horrific crimes that took place inside. In fact, it was given the name, the House of Horrors. But in 2013, it was actually demolished to help the victims move on from their traumatizing past. In our sixth spot, we have Valencia City. Located in the Philippines, Valencia City is one of the largest and most populated cities in the province of Budkanan. It's home to over 190,000 people people. It's even a popular tourist spot. But if you want to find it on Google Earth, you can't. The whole city is just blurred out. This was apparently done under government orders. Valencia City is home to their government's headquarters. It's said to house a top secret missile defense program. Others say that they do missile testing there, but that hasn't been proven, so we really don't know. It's just weird that the whole city is blurred out, not just a single area. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Amchitka Island. Located in Alaska, sections of this island are blurred out and no one really knows why this is. But it may have to do with the nuclear testing that once took place there. From the 1950s to the 1970s, this island was the site of US underground nuclear testing. Nowadays, they are running tests to see if the island has any radioactive leakage there. If there isn't, then in 2025, it could become a wildlife reserve. But again, why is half the island blurred out? Maybe that's the section where the nuclear testing took place. But why is it still blurred? A lot of people think that the military is doing some suspicious illegal activities there. We just don't know what. Moving on, at number four, we have Vokel Air Base. Located in the Netherlands, we have the Vokel Air Base, which is a military air base used by the Royal Netherlands Air Force. According to former Dutch Prime Minister, there are 22 US nuclear bombs being stored in bunkers of this airspace, which is one of the many reasons as to why it appears pixelated on Google Earth. You got thermonuclear bombs, all the way to bombs that are said to be four times powerful as the ones used on the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now, for the longest time, the place was just rumored to have nukes. It wasn't known for sure. That was until 2013 when the prime minister let it slip. He said, and I quote, I would never have thought those silly things would still be there in 2013. I think they are an absolutely pointless part of a tradition in military thinking. In our third spot, we have the mysterious Russian site. Located in the Siberian tundra, close to the city of Egvikinot. I know I said that wrong. I literally looked up the pronunciation, but there is nothing out there, so I apologize. Egvino, Egvikinot. I'm so sorry. Anyways, the area is blurred out on Google Earth, and no one knows why. I've been saying that a lot this video, but it's true. No one knows why. But it didn't always appear like this. At one point, they had edited the satellite imagery. They cut out a section around Egmont, that place I don't know how to say, and pasted it over whatever they wanted to blur. 
they thought it would make it less obvious. But apparently on Russian maps they had the area blurred with a black box. So what's going on in that area? Some say it's harp again, others say there's a large gold deposit in that area so they don't want people finding that out, others say it's a ballistic missile testing site. Coming in at number 2 we have the murder scene. Google Earth is a snitch y'all, ok? A couple of years ago they caught a murder on camera. It shows a dark figure standing by a body laying down on the ground by some abandoned train tracks. That's all we know. Obviously due to it being disturbing in nature, they don't want people seeing it. And in our number one spot today we have the poor donkey. Now this has to be one of the funniest, yet saddest things caught on google earth slash maps. So you know how they have that van with the camera that drives along and it just snaps photos like every second in every direction? Well while going along it captured a donkey at the side of the road. Seconds later, if you click down the road and you turn back, the donkey's still there, just now laying on the floor. It had been hit by the Google Earth truck. It's pretty sad. Rest in peace, donkey. But that doesn't look too good on the company if they're going around and hitting and killing animals. Mm -hmm. 